So you might wonder what Minecraft has to do with JavaScript, but I'm very happy to announce that we are adding a JavaScript runtime to Minecraft. And um, we have two versions that we're maintaining. One is uh, built in Java. It runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And one built in C++, and it runs on basically every other platform um, there is. So this is the bedrock version, the one built in C++. And this basically means two things. So one, um, it's changing how we're shipping um, UI across all our products, so anything from Android and iOS to Switch and Xbox. But two, maybe more crucially for you, um, we're exposing game logic through a JavaScript AI so you can create maps, mods, and um, custom gameplay, whatever you want. I'm going to talk about both of these, but it's going to be more of a case study where we focus on the first one. And really the question of like, how did we even end up here? It might seem completely natural to you um, that we're adding JavaScript, but it wasn't to us. So we're going to talk about how we ended up here, um, how you can work or how we work with JavaScript, and what you will be able to do in the future, and then some reflections around that. But so let's just start with some context. So Mojang is the company originally behind Minecraft. It's 140 people located in Sweden on the east coast around here, a country famous for red cottages, farms, bill of the bookshelf, ABBA, Swedish meatballs, and possibly the awkwardness of standing <laughs> in line. But hopefully, hopefully also Minecraft. Um, so um, we uh, have now over 90 million active players. It's still growing strong. It's very strong with um, kids around 9 to 12, but all of us play Minecraft, all ages. So just how many have played Minecraft? Just raise your hand. OK, it's a lot of us. That's awesome. Um, and um, oh, sorry, there was a slide. Um, and of course, we all build great things, right? We build things like uh, vast landscapes. You might have seen crazy hacks like people building Game, Bo um, Game Boys that sort of work. And now we recently added a lot of content to the ocean, so you can start exploring those. So behind this project that we're talking about today is a small team of 12 people, which is um, three designers, uh, 10. Uh, three designers, uh, three front-end developers, and three back-end developers. And we were working on this thing. So we were working on a big redesign of the UI of Minecraft because it doesn't look great, to be honest. Um, this is the current UI. It looks uh, like an um, homage to the old Windows 95 um, look and feel. So we were working on updating the visuals. And this is some of the mocks that we created. And we have a lot of animations going on. And we have this interesting problem of being on basically every platform. So not only then Windows and Mac, but also we're, of course, on Android, iOS, Xbox, and Switch. And if you think about this, it's, it's an interesting problem, at least as a designer and someone that builds UI, to just think about. Because the same code has to not only support a lot of different screens and screen sizes, but input methods. So you have touch, gamepad, keyboard and mouse, but also any combination of these two. Switch is gamepad and touch. On a Windows laptop, you might have touch, keyboard, mouse, and plug in a gamepad, which is a nightmare. So we, <laughs> we started by trying to just figure it out uh, by building a prototype. So we built a prototype early on. It looked like this. And we built this with uh, Jekyll, actually. I'm not sure if you used it, but it's a great prototyping tool. Um, we could quickly spin up templates and uh, have a very um, rude um, data storage. And then we just use vanilla JavaScript for all the interactions to figure out like, what happens when you go between this, these different input methods. And um, just to give some context on like, how it is to work with a game, um, UI tooling for games haven't historically been great. You could imagine like an ocean of different Dreamweaver-esque um, workflows, everyone having their own one, no standard. That's basically where we were at and where most games are at. So Minecraft has a um, custom-built UI framework. Styles are defined in JSON. It's inspired by CSS, but also it's nothing like it. 
So um, we, we asked us this question, can we actually real, realize this vision in the current framework? And the answer was like, mm, maybe, but probably not. But even if we could, it would take forever. One, it, it was slow to work with. Two, it performed not great um, on a device. But then three, it was also difficult to onboard people because it was completely arbitrary and custom, right? So we started looking at some options. Of course, we uh, asked ourselves this question early on, can we just embed Chromium? Which no one should do, so we did it. Um, this is um, the prototype running, and here we just removed the background, and you see it here running in-game. So the prototype um, with animated GIFs running on top of the game. Uh, we got this to work and did an investigation. We ended up thinking this is actually a bad idea because of a few reasons, but the biggest ones Difficult to support on all platforms. We need basically every single gaming platform there is. Two, poor mobile performance. Uh, especially worried about uh, RAM consumption didn't look great. So I was skeptical to begin with, to be honest. I had, I had done a similar journey before. Um, when I was at Spotify, we, we added one single view as a web view and just tried to evaluate how that would perform. So we tried this on iOS. Um, and it didn't work out great. Um, I had backed away from that slowly. And um, we, um, there were a few problems with that. Um, so one, it didn't perform well. Two, it was really difficult to mimic all the native APIs and experiences, because Apple puts a lot of effort into making things feel a certain way. So it just ate a lot of time and didn't really perform and um, give us much value. Uh, but a few things were different this time, right? So when we tried that, uh, iPhone 4S was the latest and greatest. Now, for Minecraft, iPhone 4S is the lowest performing device that we support on iOS. So um, performance, not um, as big of an issue uh, going with web. Two, this is a slight sidetrack focused on design, but I think it, it might, we might learn something from this. I think. Uh, people have radically different expectations from an app versus from a game. So um, we have Google and Apple publishing a lot of guidelines and showing us how we should build our experiences. And then also, of course, producing a lot of APIs that help us um, create coherent experiences that adhere to those guidelines. Now, that sometimes creates this effect of apps looking the same, but it's sort of, the, these are five different apps, um, that's what they're after, right? Whereas in games, every game is its own universe, right? They look very, very different. Um, whatever UI they have is not native. It's adapted to that small universe. It's there to tell a story. Sometimes there's no UI because that's the best story. But whatever there is, it looks more like the game than the OS. So I think... Um, as users or as players, we expect an app to feel native and consistent with other apps, but we expect a game UI to tell a story and just be immersive. So few users will ever say, this game doesn't feel native. So as a developer, this gives us some, some freedom to skip native APIs and, and set different expectations. Maybe we can learn something from that um, if we want to pursue web in, in other ways, but um, we thought at least that there was value in pursuing a web um, way of building things. So, so we continued looking, and we found this framework um, called Hummingbird, built by Coherent Labs. I'm going to talk, to talk more about it. But basically, uh, it's a custom renderer, and then it's um, the VM, JavaScript VM differs per platform. Um, so we, we took this framework, we ran a bunch of performance tests, this tells you more about, I think, our framework that we had than about Hummingbird. But the light blue graph here, lower is better, and the light blue is, is bedrock, um, our current um, UI system, and then Hummingbird is, is the shorter graph. So it looked great. Uh, we embedded it and tried it in Minecraft. So here we again have live editing of UI. And this is not a cool thing if you're working with web, because that's the tooling we're used to. If you're working with a game, this is the most mind-blowing shit you've seen. 
because you have to recompile usually and it takes forever. So just this demo uh, was great. We felt great about it. We also did a very hacky uh, bridge between the um, uh, Minecraft console and JavaScript. So here, just running um, set width and changing the UI in the top left corner. And then um, running a very here um, function that just traces your path with torches so you can run around and paint um, your track, your tracks, extremely useful. Um, so um, it worked great-ish. Uh, so we give it a try. And it hasn't always been easy, especially when you're like basically imp implementing a browser. You might be looking to create something like this, but it ends up looking like this. Um, but there's now a tech preview available. It's private, but there's going to be a public beta soon. And you can now build custom UI and uh, custom experiences like this. Um, so we're going to take a look at that um, in a second. So what do you do? How do you work with uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS in Minecraft? Let's focus on that first. So um, first of all, um, Humbird is mobile optimized, so it works well. That's why we picked it. Two, it supports a subset of HTML and CSS. And these two are connected. So they are opinionated in what they implement. But whatever they implement, they implement according to the web specs. So we have Flexbox, but we don't have Float, because Float is expensive. So then the JavaScript VM differ per platform, which means, for example, that on Windows and Android, we have V8, but on iOS, we have JavaScript core. So it's basically like building another uh, web page that we're used, uh, used to. So almost all layouting is um, made through Flexbox. That means, of course, that anything that is built for um, Hummingbird will work in a regular browser, but anything built for the web will probably break horribly in Hummingbird, which is annoying at times. Um, but it means a lot to us internally, at least, because we can share components across all our different projects if we just build them with that in mind. And then it doesn't limit us. So uh, we have a few things that we're building that we'll, uh, are sharing the same infrastructure. So we have Minecraft, the game. We have websites, for example, Minecraft.net. Um, a lot of um, people going there, changing their skins, reading news. We have a launcher that you launch the Java version of Minecraft with. This builds with Ceph. And then we're building new games. And what we're really doing is we're building a design system with React then that works across all of these products, across all of these platforms. And um, we hope that just to um, focus a bit on games, we, we have a lot of problems, actually. We love the React ecosystem because there's so much that people are contributing. But we have some uh, unique problems, like we work a lot with game pads, work a lot with sound effects, and different kinds of immersive experiences. So we hope to be able to contribute back some of this very soon and open source um, a few things. But I think this, if you're watching and being, uh, or listening and being skeptical, is a great question. Like, is cross-platform uh, cross rack-driven design system just a pipe dream? We might have all read the Airbnb um, blog post about uh, sunsetting React Native and, and focusing only on fully native. And we're obviously guessing or taking this bet because we think we can make it work. Um, but it's difficult to learn from this because we, we have the problem at a different level, a different abstraction. So we're running the same then, exact same React code on all platforms since we're essentially just embedding a browser which is either completely bonkers or genius. Not sure yet. Um, but it's difficult to learn from that. And I think we at least won't have the same problems like Airbnb, Airbnb did with um, basically maintaining three different code bases. Um, so one thing that's great about um, doing this internally is that we can let anyone try the in-game UI without actually having to access the latest build. It can take a lot of time to build the game, obviously. So we have all the documentation um, running in a browser. So you can view all of our components. And inside of that, you can, of course, also just boot up um, the in-game experience and try it here in um, the browser or in a Hummingbird player, which is a very thin layer without the game. And, um, 
try out what the, what the latest state of master is. Um, so um, quickly, uh, on scripting. So we're exposing some game logic. Um, this is a fair question, what can you do? Hopefully, basically anything. Um, here's a small demo that uh, we're sharing, which is, uh, it has zoomed in now for some reason, but a Final Fantasy-esque battle system. Here you have Steve hanging in a corner looking at it. So uh, we're adding things like camera controls. You can uh, control object, entities, uh, mobs. Uh, we have some parts of the community already tweeting some things. Here's a short video of um, just a generated map um, and then a uh, villager running inside of that. Um, but we have opened up all the documentation already. So if you're curious to see what you can do with this, uh, I encourage you to go to this URL, at least to, to the public um, API that we've published. It's going to change a lot, um, but uh, you can try it out. You can also download the demo, demos that we've published uh, on these URLs. And um, just to wrap up some, some quick learnings and reflections, like why we're doing this. Uh, often get this question, was a difficult decision? Obviously, it was. This is a massive undertaking for a pretty small team. We're building a lot on a third party, uh, Coherent Labs, and there's not a ton of precedence within the gaming community. Battlefield is actually one of them, though. They're also in Stockholm. They are running React. They are uh, building it on top of Yoga, though, by Facebook. So some have tried this, but it's very new to the gaming industry. However, um, we're not really betting on a custom viewer framework. At least, that's how I look at it. Uh, we're betting on open standards, uh, we're ahead to them, and we're betting on the JavaScript community. And as a designer, I'm extremely excited about the JavaScript community and the design community meeting, and it feels like we're just seeing the beginning of that with tools like Framer now adapting React and Framer X. So we have, um, with that bet on the JavaScript community, um, we're making hiring easier for us. There's a ton of you and us that have a lot of experience building UIs. Um, there's a vibrant open source community. There's great documentation for everything. Vast tooling landscape. Just something like visual regression testing is a dream come true for us being able to tap into that um, tooling infrastructure. And then, of course, integrated design tools. So JavaScript is everywhere. Uh, we joke. Uh, internally at Minecraft and say often that if it has a CPU, it probably runs Minecraft. So hopefully, maybe these two things can be combined, and um, I hope that especially with Minecraft being strong with kids, this choice can introduce um, JavaScript to a couple of million kids. Thank you.